Number 43, determine the number of moles and the mass requested for each reaction in exercise 4.42. Wahoo! And then we have letter D out of that exercise set. So in this case, we just need to find the moles and the mass of carbon dioxide uh, formed by the combustion of 20.0 kilograms of carbon in an excess of oxygen. Okay, so welcome to stoichiometry, right? This is a stoic question. No problem. I know that it's stoichiometry because they gave me a number for a element here, right? Carbon. So they told me that I have 20 uh, kilograms of carbon and they're asking for an amount of a completely different compound, carbon dioxide. So I know that I have to go through all my rules that I would for any stoichiometry question, but I got you guys. The first thing you have to do is you have to balance or find a balanced equation. Now we've done tons of problems like that in the past. If you guys are on the playlist, which I highly recommend you are, um, you could go in, in the front of the playlist. The first questions are learning how to balance equations and make them. So this will kind of be like a review. Let's see if your answer matches mine. So you can pause the video if you want and try to think of a balanced equation for this and then just see if it matches mine. Okay, so in this case, um, we are combusting carbon in an excess of oxygen and I am forming carbon dioxide. So my equation would be a carbon, and that's a free element, so C, plus O, that's the oxygen, but remember, oxygen is not a free element. Oxygen is one of your diatomics, and this will yield carbon dioxide, which is CO2. Now I write my equation, that's all cool, but I gotta make sure that it's balanced. But I look at it and I see that it is balanced. So we're all good to go. I'm gonna throw this on up over here. Okay, so first part done. Second part is we just like to write like a little roadmap, right, for stoichiometry. And the roadmap always comes from this idea right here. You could always go from one compound or one element to another by doing this idea of grams to moles to moles to grams. Grams to moles to moles to grams, okay? So your starting materials is your red. I labeled it as A. And the one that you want to find are your blues, and that's in B. We're just going to cater this to what we have. Now, they told us, what was the starting material here? So let's see. The starting material, the only number that they told us was we had 20.0 kilograms of carbon. Ah, so maybe if I just drop this down, right? And I just write what I have uh, below the elements. So they told us that we have 20.0 kilograms of carbon. So that's why I write it under the C. And the question is asking for what's the moles and what's the mass of the carbon dioxide? So I go to my carbon dioxide and I say, okay, moles equals question mark and the mass. And remember, a mass is grams. If they just ask for a mass, it's always grams. But what's the problem, guys? You probably can see it, right? I'm starting with kilograms, but this schematic is in grams. So what's the first thing that I have to do? I gotta convert this amount of kilograms into grams. We've done those, right? We know how to convert from kilograms to grams, right? And I'll just put it up here. And the easy way of doing kilograms to grams is just multiplying by 1,000. Sure, we could do the dimensional analysis way, but for these quick conversions, I would not even worry about it. I would just take that 20 and times by 1,000, Similarly, you can take the decimal and move it over to the right three times and fill in the, uh, the decimal places. So in this case, I'm just going to do sig figs. I'm going to keep with the three sig figs idea here with scientific notation. You don't have to. You know what? Maybe I won't. I like to change my mind. But it should be 20,000 grams. So now I'm over here and I have 20,000 grams of, not A, but C. Keeping with the schematic, I have to go from grams of carbon to moles of carbon, right? Not A anymore, I'm just gonna cater it to what I want. Then from there, we're gonna cross over paths and do what 
we need, and that's CO2. So maybe I'll just pull this out a little bit, just so I have more room. I'm not going to find it for moles of B. I'm going to do CO2, and then from there I could find the grams of CO2. And that is my whole schematic. This is now just one big dimensional analysis. So let's, let's, let's go. You start with what you're given. In this case, I have 20,000 grams of C. And actually, what I want to do, I want to keep with the colors. So grams of C, right? Now, you got to go to moles of carbon. So times by a ratio, where we're going to put something on the top and something on the bottom. But you don't want grams of carbon, so that goes on the opposite side. Grams of carbon goes on the bottom. And just look to see what you want. Oh, I want mole of carbon. So the units are there. Perfect. But now, what are the numbers that go here? Well, if we're using this schematic, grams to moles, we've already done that. Grams to moles is always using the periodic table. So get your periodic tables out, guys, right? Periodic table, PT. When you're using the periodic table, remember, there's always one mole. So wherever that mole is on your ratio, you put a one next to it. The mass numbers on the periodic table is where you put it on the gram side. So I look at my periodic table, and on my periodic table, carbon is 12.01. Now I can cancel out gram and gram of carbon. The number does not cancel, just the units. And now we're over here. So that's not where we want to be. We want to be either on the moles of CO2 or the grams of CO2. So I got to keep going. Don't worry about multiplying or dividing. We save that for when we need to. So I'm just going to keep running with it. I do my next conversion factor, right, my next ratio. I don't want mole of carbon anymore, so that goes on the opposite side. And now look ahead to see what you want. Oh, I want moles of CO2. So that's the space that goes up here. Okay, got the units down. Now, what numbers are going to go here? Mole to mole conversions, especially from one compound to another, are always the balanced equation and that's why we need a balanced equation at the beginning now when we're doing the balanced equation you're just taking your coefficients the big numbers in front of your compound or your molecule so you just go to the ones that you need i just need carbon dioxide and i just need carbon but for both of them i have no number in front of carbon and i have no number in front of carbon dioxide so there's secret ones there. I have one C and I have one CO2. So one and one. And now the unit mole of C cancels out. And looky here, I have one of my answers, right? They wanted moles of CO2. So that's what we're going to get. Now I just say an equal sign and I just do the math. Looks like I don't even care about this. I just do this because I have the right unit. But for, you know, math purposes, I'm just going to take the 20,000 and divide it by 12.01. 20,000 divided by 12.01. And if I want to keep with the sig figs, right, there was three sig figs in my, in the beginning of the problem that they gave us. So there needs to be three sig figs at the end. When you're converting, remember, all the conversions don't count for significant figures. So... With three significant figures and putting it into scientific notation, I get 1.67. Yeah, 1.67 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3. And that's mole of CO2. So, one answer down. Let's get the next answer. So now we're over here. Well... Just another conversion factor to get to grams. I'm going to take this answer and just go to grams. So I'll do that over here. 1.67 times 10 to the third mole of CO2. And you know what? Maybe I will put that in blue just to keep everything color-coded. And dimensional analysis. 
So times by a ratio, do the units first and then go back and put the numbers. I don't want mole of CO2 anymore, so that goes on the bottom. I want gram of CO2, so that goes on the top. And then what numbers are here? Well, just like before, when you had a gram and a mole, I used the periodic table. Same thing here. I had a mole and a gram, but it doesn't matter. You have a mole and a gram, a gram and a mole. So you're going to use the periodic table. And just like before, when we use the periodic table, there was always one mole. So wherever the, the unit mole is, you put a one there. This number is the, the mass that comes from the periodic table. So you have one carbon, so 12.01, plus two uh, oxygen, so two times 16. And I get 44.01. Everything's good here, so the unit mole of CO2 will cancel. And now it's just multiplication. I'm just going to take the 1.67 times 10 to the third and times it by 44.01. I should keep it with three sig figs, right? So I'm going to say 7.35. Times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4. So a lot of a lot of grams of carbon dioxide was produced. And it kind of makes sense uh, because you had a lot. You had 20 kilograms. You had 20,000 grams. So you should come out to large numbers here. Yeah? Okay. So I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Give the video a thumbs up if you would like, um, and subscribe to the channel, all right? I hope you guys are having a great day and that you're doing well out there. Um, keep studying hard. Chem is not hard. It's just a little challenging, but I got you guys, right? So I'll see you in the next lesson. Let's keep working hard, all right? Bye-bye.